In today's Financially Speaking, many Americans are facing the reality of how to care for their grandparents in their later years. The World Health Organization believes 22% of the world population will be 60 years or older by the year 2050. As a family, how do you cover the cost of taking care of your parents and your grandparents? Well, joining us to talk about it is Matt Hope of Elder Guide. Matt, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, I want to start off with some fact checking here. Is it true that someone turning 65 today has almost a 70% chance of needing some long term care? Yeah, that is true. That's actually a number that's reported by the US government. You can find it on uh, longtermcare.gov. Wow, that's a sh shocking statistic in this day and age. So, what should people be looking at when it comes to finding elder care facility? So, for, for me, the first thing to look at would be uh, if you're planning on using Medicare or Medicaid, you want to double check that a community uses or accepts Medicare or Medicaid. Obviously, if they don't, that rules them out pretty quickly. The next thing that I'm personally looking at is the quality of long term care and the inspection reports uh, for the communities. And how do you prefer to examine those areas? Yeah, so we've made it really easy on our website. Um, you can look at each nursing home community and you can see uh, their, how their grades compare to the other communities that are in the area. Um, so that's, that was the whole purpose of what we've built, actually. So Fantastic resource. Well, a lot of times when making these decisions, it all comes down to the data, right? What specifically should families be considering when looking at the data? Sure. So, so in addition to what I just mentioned, um, another big data point that we look at is the quality of nurse care. And one of the big metrics for that is how many hours uh, on staff uh, do we see of nurses per patient, right? And then additionally, in, in addition to that, there's uh, a few metrics involving patient care. And essentially, these are ruling out um, conditions that are completely preventable, like pressure, pressure ulcers and things like that. Absolutely. Well, we also know that different cultures take care of their elderly differently, of course. Now, should this be considered when looking at the data? This is an emotional time for families and for not just the, the member of the family who's moving into a facility, but also just the families in general. Um, so finding a community that adheres to your expectations is vital. Um, there's not a, a really clear way that that's trackable at the moment with the data, but uh, obviously going and touring the communities and, and seeing for yourselves would be uh, highly recommended. Now, does this information affect women differently or is it all the same? How, what are some of those uh, statistics? There? Sure. So, so women on average spend about 50% longer uh, in, in t a longer time in these communities. Um, so the the statistics there, right? It's 50% longer of their lives wow. versus men. So it's, it's a little bit more uh, uh, time, right? And then in addition to that, um, there are unfortunately abuse cases do tend to involve women more often than men. Mm, that's really sad. Um, at the top, you mentioned about um, if you're paying with Medicaid or Medicare or if it's family, who more often does pay for these services in the end? Is it the family, the Medicaid, Medicare? Yeah, sure. So, so Medicare is usually used for what's called non-custodial non care, which these are um, these are skilled nursing facilities where there's like an injury. So it's maybe instead of hospitalization, um, and that that's usually for like a hundred days or less. Medicaid covers uh, extended care if the individual is at a certain income level, and then um, the the in, the individual's income and net worth will have, have to have essentially been exhausted for Medicaid to kick in. Um, so if a family chooses to not use uh, the Medicaid uh, facilities that are located near them, then the cost would fall onto the family. And I can imagine this must be financially devastating for a lot of families trying to take care of the, their elderly. Do you often see that? Absolutely. Um, one of the biggest things that we see is when when families end up choosing the wrong community that's not the correct fit for them. So there's obviously the, the financial cost of uh, starting somewhere and then trying to transfer to somewhere else. But then the, there's also just the emotional cost. And it can even lead to issues between family members, right? If, if you know, so, someone's worried about 
financial costs, and then someone else is worried about, let's say, the cultural adherence or, or, or other t types of care. Um, so unfortunately, uh, uh, there can be quite substantial costs associated with this. Well, fortunately, we have people like yourself, your group, to help everyone navigate this difficult time. For more information on how to take care of the elderly, you can go to elderguide.com. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.